In this video, I'm going to be talking about why Krillin is the most powerful character in Dragon Ball. Yo, what's up guys, welcome back to Siphon, and today we're going to be discussing various parts of Krillin's past, where he comes from, how he got so strong, and how Krillin can hold his own in today's present Dragon Ball Super anime. So let's begin by talking about what Krillin actually is. So Krillin is an actual human without any genetic variation or mix of species, unlike the Saiyans, which are usually full or half Saiyan for most of the Dragon Ball series. With the exception of Pam, of course, which is technically a quarter Saiyan, Krillin himself is actually a monk from the Orange temple, Krillin dedicated 8 years to studying as a monk which taught him mental discipline, celibacy which clearly didn't work since he had a child, and a small amount of acrobatic martial arts which he later used to train with Master Roshi on Kame Island which is obviously where he trained with Goku throughout the series. Something very interesting about Krillin is that he does not have a natural ability or talent for martial arts or any key usage. Unlike Goku which has a natural ability for all of key manipulation, martial arts, as well as dominant aggression throughout fighting which comes from his natural instincts as a Saiyan. This is something very important to note throughout the Dragon Ball series simply because Goku is always going to be ahead of Krillin just because Goku's species was actually made and is mutated over time to enjoy and increasingly get better at battle throughout time and experience which is why I think comparing the two characters is very unfair which is why I believe Krillin is one of the best most powerful characters throughout DBZ. Now let's talk about why Krillin has successfully managed to continue raising the level for humans in terms of how powerful they can become. So we know that Krillin has a really good work ethic as well as constantly trained with people more powerful than him and has never given up regardless of the power difference between everyone else and him. That's something I find very crazy considering the Saiyans always find some new power level including Super Saiyan, Kaioken, any of these new abilities and transformations that he can't personally master. Yet regardless of that, Krillin seems to always continue and push himself even harder which we can see pays off throughout the series considering he can hold his own in the tournament of power. Not only that but let's take into consideration that he actually quit being a fighter for a while when he had a child so he ended up becoming a police officer which stunted his growth for some time and regardless of that he was able to hold his own in the tournament of power as well as even fight off Goku during Super Saiyan 2 transformation. I'm also pretty sure that this work ethic as well as his ability to continue motivating himself consistently comes from the teachings that the monks gave him throughout his time at the Oran Temple. Aside from all the great things of Krillin I do want to bring up one issue that I do see throughout all the Dragon Ball series which is that Krillin tends to die multiple times for some odd reason. Now I find this obviously annoying since he does tend to wait for Goku or someone more powerful to step in during the battle, yet regardless of this, when he does get brought back to life, he's ready to fight and continue the battle. Which definitely takes a lot of determination considering you just died and it's pretty traumatic to go through something like that multiple times. One of the last things I want to mention specifically for Krillin is that he doesn't get many power boosts throughout the series the same way the other characters do. The only power boost that Krillin actually got was from an elder Namekian called Guru which unlocks Krillin's sleeping potential which allows him to increase his power level and fight off Frieza's forces. We can also see the character go on get his potential unlocked as well but throughout the series he actually gets another potential unlock called the mystic form which is given to him by elder kaioshin and again the other characters also receive something similar an example would be goku receives kaioken kaioken initially doubled the user's strength as well as senses but now goku has gone as far as multiplying it by 10 which is insane and there's a load of different other ones that all the main characters tend to get except for krillin that's another reason why we can see the power disparity between krillin and the rest of the saiyans and main characters but hey that's all i can come up with let me know if you guys have any comments in the comments section below and let's continue the discussion in the comments to see if I forgot anything or maybe there's something you can add to the theories yourself and if you guys are interested you can go ahead and check out any of my other Dragon Ball Super videos which I'm sure you'll be interested have a good one peace